Hi everyone, Cy Venom here with AWS. Today, let's talk about Crossplane. Crossplane is an open source framework to provision and consume infrastructure in basically any cloud service provider, and notably uses a Kubernetes API to do so. But why use Kubernetes to manage infrastructure? First, a quick recap on Kubernetes. One big reason why Kubernetes is so popular for running container-based applications is because it has a reconciliation loop. This is a control loop that ensures that the state of your cluster matches the state of the config that you've passed in. And that config is declarative, as in it's a set of facts rather than a set of instructions. Now, with Crossplane, not only do we write our infrastructure configuration declaratively, but we allow Kubernetes to manage that configuration. Let's dive into an example. Crossplane needs to run on a Kubernetes cluster, so let's create this cluster either locally with something like Kind or create a cluster on EKS. Now, we'll consider this to be our management cluster and we'll install Crossplane on it. Now, Crossplane comes with some core components, so I'll sketch that out here as just core. And so, of course, this will include um, things like CRDs, controllers, um, a workload scheduler, some other components that are part of core Crossplane. But for Crossplane to be able to actually communicate with uh, a cloud service provider, we'll need what's called a provider. Um, and so this we'll call provider AWS, which we can install uh, onto our cluster as well. And this is going to enable Crossplane to communicate with our account on AWS Cloud. Um, now, we're going to need to set up some credentials here, whether it's a Kubernetes secret with the AWS credentials uh, or even uh, IRSA, IAM roles for service accounts uh, when you're running Crossplane on an Amazon EKS cluster. All providers come with a set of managed resources, which are the lowest level primitives in Crossplane. They communicate directly with cloud provider APIs. For example, if we wanted to create uh, an EKS cluster with our uh, kind of cross-plane management cluster, uh, we could create a managed resource uh, with the kind uh, for the EKS cluster. Now, we generally actually wouldn't do this. Uh, for one, a cluster resource by itself uh, is only one piece of the puzzle. Uh, you'll also need other components for a uh, production-ready EKS environment. For example, that can include things like managed node groups uh, or IAM roles. Uh, each of which, uh, you know, we need to create other managed resources. Uh, so you can see it can start to get fairly complex. Now, managed resources are the building blocks of Crossplane. They're actually designed to be composed by higher level opinionated custom resources. Of course, working with Kubernetes, custom resources are a way to extend the power of Kubernetes to resources that are not built in. Now, Crossplane calls these composite resources, or XRs. Now, uh, for an XR or composite resource, uh, we're going to need a couple more things to define uh, that resource itself. So we're going to need uh, an XRD. So this is a composite resource definition. Um, that's going to define the composite resource itself, you know, the param uh, parameterization, uh, the name of the composite resource itself, uh, which we'll get to in a minute here, which enables us to make a claim against it. Um, in addition, we're also going to have compositions. Uh, now, a composition is going to actually uh, determine what happens once the custom resource is created. So, uh, creating the underlying managed resources, for example. Um, okay, so now we kind of have uh, the pieces of the puzzle here. By the way, if a lot of this sounds like Kubernetes CRs, custom resources, or custom resource definitions, CRDs, um, it is, but just a little bit more opinionated. Uh, and by the way, all the components we've talked about so far are the responsibility of the platform or operations teams. Uh, generally, your app developers will never create composite resources directly. Uh, well, for one, composite resources uh, are scoped globally rather than to a namespace. Um, so we want a clear separation of responsibility between the platform team and the application team. So we'll kind of draw a dotted line here, and here's where we're going to get uh, where we're going to get to claims. Now, claims enable app teams uh, to essentially make a claim against a composite resource. So let's say that in one namespace we have claim A because claims are going to be scoped to namespaces. 
uh, and another claim B uh, because we want to have production ready EKS clusters. Uh, now, once we create those claims, that's actually going to go ahead and provision a custom resource. Now, these claims uh, define some parameters. Those parameters are defined by the custom resource definition and the composition. Um, and once we create these, this will actually provision a composite resource. In this way, it helps to think of a claim as an application's, uh, application team's interface to a composite resource. Here's a simple example. The platform team may decide that the IAM roles for the cluster uh, should be immutable for security purposes. They don't want the app teams to change them. But they want to uh, expose the ability to customize the size and the machine type of the managed node group um, so that the app team can kind of customize those. Now, this architecture, although it seems a little bit confusing, is ideal for platform teams and application teams. Now, as an app developer, you can simply use the composite resource definitions and the compositions that your platform team has deployed to your crossplane cluster. And with the claims, they're going to be scoped to namespaces, so you can align them to teams or logical groupings for applications. Now, let's walk through this flow. So a claim gets created by the app team. That, in turn, will provision a composite resource. Now, that composite res resource is uh, defined by a composite resource definition and composed by a composition. That composite resource will then create uh, managed resources, and it's going to manage these managed resources. Um, so that, you know, the managed node group, the cluster, and the roles, uh, the controller, the Kubernetes API will detect this. And of course, using the underlying uh, AWS provider and the credentials we provided, it's going to spin up the necessary pieces of the infrastructure for our EKS cluster as we've defined in AWS. Last thing I want to mention here, although it's great to get started with the AWS provider, which provides a large number of managed resources, you'll quickly realize that most use cases, like the one we just walked through here today, require you to compose a set of managed resources. To make it easier to work with Crossplane when using Amazon EKS, we've published a set of blueprints. Really, these are compositions and composite resource definitions that you can install into your Crossplane environment along with your AWS provider. These customizable blueprints allow you to get started quickly with creating production-ready EKS environments. To get started with Crossplane on Amazon EKS, check out some of the links in the description below. Thanks for watching. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this in the future.